active fighters in boxing, 49, 2 and 2. And that's really a lot of fights for a guy to have in his mid 20s. Hey, these days in boxing. It certainly is. You get a look at his edge in the punching. And Tony had five fights in 1992 right after winning the title. Didn't always take the big money. He went right out and fought. It was sort of a throwback to the way fighters used to be. Well, speaking of fighting, Tony landed two excellent right hands, and Mason tried to flurry back but couldn't hit him. Big right hand by Mason, but Tony absorbed some of that blow by turning away as he so often does. Good head movement by Tony. Mason's been slapping with his shots thus far in this fight. If he could tighten them up a little bit, he could really test the chin of James Tony. He's had the chances. They're right in front of each other. Very pleasing style this has evolved into. Banger versus banger. Now you see why Richard Mason went the distance with Jimmy Thunder, went the distance with Arlen Norris. He obviously can take a punch. Problem is, how quickly can he shift into offense and try to win these fights? Tony caught him coming in a little earlier in this round and, and added to the power of the punch. Tony is more active, Dave, I think, than we've seen him in recent fights. He looks like he's got some pretty good balance. He's still up on his toes here, though it's relatively early. You don't see heavyweights on their toes for too much. He has a pretty good sense of banging, then getting out, then getting back inside. He's us using a lot of the tricks he's learned at lighter weights up here. A yeah, very good point. They say his future is in the cruiserweight division. He's well above that tonight, but uh, Stan Hoffman, his manager, said that. This is an interesting evening uh, for the folks that are into boxing. They'll know Jackie Callen, his former manager, is the manager of Bronco McCart. And, she, and he is fighting later. Jackie told us earlier today it's kind of weird to be at a fight where she's watching James Tony. This is the first time this has happened since their breakup, and she's not managing if somebody else is. But she said things are cordial enough now where they can all talk amongst themselves. It's pretty eerie. It does tell you about an era gone by, and that was a very long era. Jackie Callan was one of the top managers in boxing and gained some distinction when she had James Tony. And she hopes Bronco McCarter will be on a little later. Her fighter will give, give her another championship. Right now, her former charge, James Tony's looking pretty darn good against Richard Mason, who is trying very hard, but not quite getting it done. We will be back. Stay with us. That is James Tony, the former middleweight and super middleweight title holder, fighting tonight, actually, as a heavyweight, although it was a cruiserweight fight. He came in over the weight, got fined half his purse, but um, he doesn't care. He's, he's happy about the way he's fighting. And oh, just call me a nut. I think somebody will find a way to make up that money that he was fined. And uh, he's taking on Richard Mason tonight. Yeah, you're not, his next fight probably. Yeah. He'll I, find 12,000 oh, or whatever more for him. Those promoters have a way of making that money up, don't they? Well, here you go with Tony's edge in the punches. Nice percentage for him, consistency throughout the bout. And I wonder if he can ever get back down to cruiserweight again, especially if he looks at this performance and he's happy with it. Well, There's a lot of money up here, and people put ideas in your head about, you know, you fight this guy, you get a lot of money. Where would he fight Bobby Chess, for instance? Yeah, that's true. The only thing, of course, his only problem is a lot of heavyweights are going to be a lot bigger and punch a lot harder than Richard Mason. Tony misses and goes off in the corner to think about it for a moment and comes back. One good thing about the way James Tony is fighting, though, he is throw, showing us more combination, more hand speeds, etc., than uh, than he has before. But Dave, if he fights this way against cruiserweights, he's going to be in good shape. Uh, he'll be indomitable there as far as going through these guys. He'll have enough speed here. The power is always there. Richard Mason, meanwhile, the 28-year-old from Cincinnati who, as we said, came in here with a very legitimate shot uh, at doing well, and, and in some respects he has done well. He, he lost in 12 to his last, in his last fight with Jimmy Thunder, big heavyweight. And other than his loss to Orla Norris, has had a nice win streak. But he has been just a little bit short, I think, in hand speed to hit Tony. And he's also showing the first signs of fatigue here. The body shots by Tony are adding up early in this fight. And he's a little bit behind in the reaction. You know, when you see that an opponent's coming in a little bit heavier, you expect him to be slower. And Tony hasn't been that way. If you think about it, and you pointed out, up over 200 pounds, he's fighting at 40-some-odd pounds more 
that he did when he won the title from Michael Nunn in 1991. He, he won that title like five weight classes ago. Oh, God. 25% of his body weight ago. That is really yeah, quite so an astonishing thing. Under half a minute left to go here in round five. Al Bernstein along with Dave Bontempo. We're delighted you joined us on uh, our championship boxing series here on ESPN. Bronco McCart. Later on, we'll go for the vacant WBO junior middleweight um, title as he takes on Santos Cardona in what should be a very entertaining matchup. Round five comes to an end, so we're at the halfway point in this battle between Richard Mason and James Tony, and they exchange stares. Well, it wasn't like there wasn't enough hostility going on during the round. Just champions in the ring. We get all kinds of champions because uh, one of the champion comedians in this, uh, I, sh I shouldn't just say in this country because he's huge in Mexico with his own talk show. Paul Rodriguez is going to sit in with us, schmooze with us, and do some boxing. I Are we lucky, guys? I watched one of his performances for about a half an hour. I just couldn't stop laughing. You constantly he had laughed. It. He was there. Did you laugh at all the right jokes? That's what I want to make sure. Otherwise, he'll be offended. I I'll have to ask Paul <laughs> okay. when he gets in here. <laughs> There'll be a quiz. Anyway, he's going to sit with us. He's a delightful man, and uh, uh, we're happy to have him. Who knows? This may be a start. You know, we'll, have, we'll constantly have a guest uh, guest appearance by someone. Yeah, he'll help us with the comedy. We'll help him with the announcing. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we may be beyond help in that regard. We're in round six. This one is scheduled for ten. James Tony in the green trunks, and Richard Mason is in the black. And James Tony has been performing extremely well, landing he's, constantly. He's been the bully that we've seen at lighter weight classes. Using the jab so much more. And I, we're not touting Richard Mason as the, the greatest cruiserweight or small heavyweight that's out there. But he's, he's a man who has gone to distance with some good people and is not that terrible a fighter. And so for James Tony to be handling him this way speaks well. He's taking a lot of the aggressiveness away from Richard Mason now. Now Tony experimenting for a second with Southpaw. That's how confident he was about how this fight is going. We're not seeing Mason leading at all. He's trying to win as a counterpuncher, and Tony's getting sharper and sharper. And that's not going to happen. Also, earlier, there's a nice uppercut. And look, there's the jab by Tony again. He is throwing combinations, putting his punches together. Earlier in the bout, Mason landed a couple of really strong right hands. It didn't have any impact on Tony. It didn't. And then when Tony went to the body, he took a lot of the steam out of these shots by Mason here. And Mason is laboring right now. Tony is showing the right amount of offensive intensity, knows when to tie up, knows how to preserve his energy, utilize some ring savvy here, and he's got it all over Mason right now. Mason gets in an overhand right. It's been another good round for James Tony. And that had nothing. Mason's good shot with the right hand. In the first couple of rounds, that had something, but he is slapping, and he's been into the body a lot. Under a half minute left to go here in the sixth round. Mason starting to get to Tony a little bit on the ropes, but what impact do those punches have? We'll see. Stay with us. Round seven is still to come, and Richard Mason is launching a little mini comeback. Well, no lack of effort for Mason. Tries everything. Tony blocks one, deflects one with his glove, and able to defuse most of Mason's would-be rally there. All right, we head into round seven. James Tony in the green trunks. In the black, it is Richard Mason. It has been an affair dominated by James Tony. Neither man has been down, but Tony has taken control mostly in this box. Tony, the former middleweight and super middleweight title holder, of course. If you're a boxing fan, you know that. Well, Tony with complete dominance, and that is a category he'd be very happy to be leading with here, the good percentage with the jab. That's something that lighter weight fighters usually keep with them yes. when they come up to heavyweights. And I'll tell you what, even 
if he's in cruiserweight, that's the thing that could be his ticket. You mentioned earlier that James Tony may say, well, heck, I can fight with these heavyweights. I'm going to say categorically, he would, and I'm sure you agree with this, he would be doing himself a huge disservice if he bought into that and decided he could beat heavyweights. Because I'm going to tell you, he won't beat the bigger punching heavyweights. He oh, will not. It's not for him. However, we do know that he's going to be hit with a lot of ideas, so yes. it's very interesting to see what, what he gets approached with. Yeah, we'll see. Of course, we don't want to write off Richard Mason yet in this spot, but he is he is taking a pounding from James Tony. And in truth, I don't think anyone objectively can say that a man that started out at 160 cannot get down to 195 to be a cruiserweight. <laughs> it's pretty hard to say that. You can't get down when yeah. you've been 35 pounds less. I, you know. Good right by Tony. He is setting down in his punches. But let me tell you something. This should tell him something. He's not getting Richard Mason out of there with the biggest punches no. that he can throw. And he has to stop and wait at times in this fight. He's resting occasionally in here, chewing a little bit of clock like a good veteran. With all that, it's been a superb performance by him. And against an opponent that is certainly trying. There you see Mason still throwing the left hook. Richard Mason has hardly given up in this bout. Under a minute left to go here in the seventh round is scheduled for 10. Double left hook by Mason doesn't get there, and Joan, er, and uh, Tony comes right back with a right to the body. And the discussion about where he'll fight really points at the dilemma that lighter heavyweights or cruiserweights have because the cruiserweight division is not marketable. Even though you should fight down there, yeah. it's hard to make money. And I think that's a shame because I've always liked some of the, uh, the fighters in the cruiserweight division. Yeah, well, De Leon came in in the beginning and dominated it when it was first instituted. Orlando Norris, Al Cole got so much better. Anna Clay Wamba, we saw him once. <laughs> He's never been seen again after he was seen on ESPN. <laughs> Luckily, the same cannot be said for you and I. We'll be back for round eight. I'm warming up for Paul. As we bounce back and forth uh, from network to network, I don't know where I am. I think I'm on ESPN, yes. And we're heading, and we're heading into round eight. And uh, it is James Tony in the green and Richard Mason in the black. Tony continues to jab and also try to lure Mason in so he can land the right hand on him. It's a good uppercut, and Mason has been fighting the stamina barrier for the last three rounds. Since he lost to Roy Jones Jr., James Tony is 5-1, and, and his weight has gone up. It went up from 175 to 189 during the series of those fights, and now it is up over 200. So we've, we've uh, probably beat that horse to death, but it's an interesting topic because not too many fighters are able to do that. You know, and what are we here for if not to beat a topic to death? Huh? <laughs> All the way. <laughs> Under two minutes left to go in round eight. There are TV critics all across America hopefully not agreeing with that point, huh? Now we hope not. Good left hand by James Tony. Richard Mason, the 28-year-old from Cincinnati, came in here with a 21-4-1 record. 15 KOs, but he has not really shown the power of those 15 KOs. After the second round in which he lost the power exchange with Tony, Mason has been timid as far as opening it up, generally speaking. And once the other guy establishes strength over you, you might see a fighter become a little wary about mixing it up, and he has been. Double left hook there by Tony. And he really has been... Tremendous to the body tonight. It has been a bout in which Tony's hand speed and his defensive ability seem to be the main things that have frustrated Richard Mason. Good right again by Tony, and he has just enough movement to get away. Tony exhibited a portion of all these skills in the first three rounds of the fight, effectively taking control and setting the tempo. Mason really hasn't been able to do anything about that. I put forth the theory at the time, and I subscribed to it, that right after he beat Iran Barkley when he was at 168 and in very good condition, we saw James Tony.